Hi, so I'm Carla Starnes. I am the creator or the person behind the piece of artwork that you see here called Handmade Strong. It is handmade paper that um, speaks on the exhibit here right now uh, about suffrage. Um, and I started this piece um, back during our primaries back in April of 2020. And I started with this piece right here in the center. Um, and I went to primary polling locations to have women help me pull paper as they came out from voting in our local primaries. Um, this year marks 100 years since we have, as women, have been able to vote. So I wanted to create this piece um, as a celebration piece on how far we have come. Um, I have been making paper for about five years now, and um, it's really kind of funny because all of all of my pieces, my conceptual pieces that I have done, all end up being in a circle. And um, I don't really know exactly how to explain why I do a lot of circular pieces, but there is um, there is something that says in a circle that it means growth. And when I had original plans for this piece, I didn't think that it was going to be in a circle. But then towards the end, of course, I decided to make it towards that that growth um, that we have experienced over the last 100 years. Um, so that's what this piece is about. It starts with a piece that I pulled and it has an I voted sticker embedded in the middle of it. And then other women of the community have helped me pull other pieces. Um, and I'll show you in a little while towards the end. Um, the last few pieces are pulled with beer grains, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes, um, about the different materials you can use, but it's, they're beer grains. This is cotton, and it swirls and goes into the spiral and then goes up the stairwell here, and it ends with beer grains that me and three other women brewed a beer with. Um, the beer was supposed to be at a women's only beer festival in Charlotte back in April, but it got canceled due to COVID. Um, but women only brewed the beer. And 100 years ago, women weren't voting, nor were they brewing beer. Um, so that's how that's how it kind of ended. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through the process. I'm going to um, show you some of the materials that I use. So here at this table here, I have... A vat that has water in it. I uh, keep it warm because that's, I don't want to put my hands in cold water. Um, I have a, a mold and a decal. Um, here's the mold. The mold has a screen on it. You can see I have pulled a lot of paper and there's paper pulp all around it. The, the decal goes on top of the mold when you go to pull paper and it kind of holds your shape. So you can use Big, small, square, rectangle, circle. Of course, there's that circle word again. Um, here's some smaller mold and decal. There's a mold that has the screen on it. And then here's your decal. So these are the materials that you're going to use. Um, the mold, the decal. Here's a pellon. And this is just the, a thin fabric that you're going to lay the paper on. Um, to dry and then it easily peels off afterwards. Um, I'll start here by showing you. These are actually some of the materials that I used for Handmade Strong. This material right here came from a yellow cotton men's shirt that I just chopped up into little pieces. And then once it's chopped up into these little pieces, you put it into a liquid water. You bring it to a bowl with soda ash to thin it out to make it more 
um, breakable into, so it can become a pulp better. So that was some that I used in this piece of women's suffrage, handmade strong. Here's also some purple material that I did the same process with. So you cut it up into small pieces, you boil it with soda ash for about two hours. Then after you have it boiled in the soda ash, you put it in a blender and blend it and you make it into a pulp. So here is the pulp that I'm going to use today. This is just made out of um, recycled construction paper. and um, it's green and teal and um, with construction paper, you don't have to boil it in uh, soda ash because it breaks up in water it, with the water and blender pretty well. So that's what I'm going to use today to show you about pulling paper. Okay, so I showed you my paper pulp. This is how I store it. Um, I easily put it in a freezer and will save it. Um, freeze it up, it will get moldy if you don't, because once you blend it, um, you have to kind of drain as much water as possible out of it, but you still have this pulp. But I'm gonna dump this pulp into this large vat, and that probably has about two inches of water in it. Um, so I'm going to put this pulp in here. Get every little piece that I can. So I'm going to pull it off sleeves and get my hands dirty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it around here and try to make it evenly spread across um, the water and the pulp. Make it even. I'll have the video and show you. So here's the pulp in the water, and I've got it evenly spread out um, into almost like a, a soup. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose a mold and deckle size or shape or whatever. I'm going to use um, the same mold and deckle that I used to for most of this art project here. Um, so this is just an 8 by 10 frame that I handmade a, with a screen on it and to create this mold. Um, so to pull the paper... I'm going to make sure that there's movement going on in the back. It makes it easier to make it evenly distributed across my screen and across my decal. So, once I have some movement going there, I'm going to completely submerge the mold and decal under the water. And I've kind of moved it back and forth a little bit. I don't know if you can't see it from anymore right there, but I um, move back and forth a little bit. And then I pull it up. And the screen helps the water drip out. So I'm gonna remove my decal now. And so on top of my mold is a pulled piece of handmade paper. Still dripping wet, it usually takes about two days for paper to dry. But, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to couch, it's spelled like couch, but in paper pulling it's um, meaning getting the paper off the mold. So that's when my Kellogg comes in handy over here. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to take my mold that has the paper on there, and I'm going to slip it over onto my Kellogg, and kind of push the paper off the screen. And then I slowly lift this up. My screen is empty, but I now have to pull this paper on to my Kellogg. And see there, these like little imperfections here are some of my favorite parts about pulling paper. Adds character. So at this point, I could even go on and cover my whole L on. Like I can make a huge piece of paper that. You know, I could go on and do many things with. I've recently gotten into doing solar printing cyanotypes, um, which is 
whole another thing, and I'm experimenting right now with doing cyanotypes on handmade paper, which is almost like a blue. So I'm, I'm doing some experimenting with that right now. It's, that's the fun thing about about paper is the experience of it and learning new things about it all the time. So now I've got two two pieces that I kind of overlapped, so it made one large piece of paper. And from this point, really, I could go in and I could add some inclusions, glitter, ribbon, anything I wanted to do. See, I could even take some of these pieces of cotton fabric from this exhibit and I could lay them out on this paper. I could make it random, I could make it purposeful, whatever I wanted to do. That's the fun thing about this, like whatever I want to do. And then I can come back over here on, on my back again, pull more. And then I'm going to lay it on top of my inclusions. And so the inclusions are in between the two pieces. Um, I do this with my students, and kids love this. I mean, it gives them a chance to really like get their hands dirty. Um, they get to design it however they want to, they get to choose whatever colors they want. They love messing around. In water, anyway. I teach elementary school, so they love getting messy. As do I. So now I have a large piece of paper that has inclusions in it. And it's so fun. Now, what will happen after it is on here for a couple of days. Um, big fancy paper makers have drying machines that they can stick them in and it will dry really, really quick, like within 24 hours, depending on how many pieces you're pulling. But um, me being an artist and finding that I need to be resourceful, um, they dry really quickly at my house if I put them on top of the refrigerator. Um, if you're making larger pieces, like we've made pieces before where you can actually paint with paper. So you think of like brush strokes with acrylic paint or oil paints or something. Um, you can really paint a picture on here with your hands and paper pulp. And, you know, you just have several different vats of different colors and you can create a whole scene and then just leave it on there to dry. The thing about doing things like that is you have to let them dry slowly um, so the paper does shrink. It, this will shrink over the next couple of days. Um, so if you let it dry slowly, you get less shrinkage out of it. Um, I've made several conceptual pieces. Uh, I've got here in this bag, I have, uh, I've just brought a bunch of gold with me. But, um, this is actually my wedding dress. Um, that I blended up and made into a pole and I did a piece on um, intimacy. And uh, that's, that's in my home now too. So I love doing conceptual conceptual work out of handmade paper. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. After that, you can take another piece of of on here and I'm gonna make sure it's a little wet and I'll lay it on top of the other piece of Kellon. And 
and I'm going to make a couple smaller pieces. And I love making small pieces right now with my small mold of jet mold because, as I said, I'm experimenting right now with doing cyanotypes, and it's uh, it's a, a chemical that I put on top of the cold paper, and then I can lay like flowers or shades or anything I want to on top of it. And I want to make sure that it's not exposed to the sunlight at all. And then I take it outside, I expose it to the sunlight for just like two minutes and cover it back up, take it in. I would dip it in water again. So that's the part that I'm experimenting with right now because something like this would fall back into back into paper pulp. I just immediately dump it back in water after it's dry. So I'm experimenting with different types of uh, materials that I can put on top of the paper to hold it in place. And then I put the chemical um, to make it a cyanotype. And um, so that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make, make me a few pieces that I will be able to experiment with for the next couple of weeks. It's all about exploring what, what can be done and what can't be done. And I'm going to do a couple layers here. I love sticky paper. I've made several books. Um, I took a book arts class in college, and I've made several books where I have used my own paper within the books on the cover, um, things actually on the inside where I have to actually write a couple books. Um, they don't really have a lot of words in them. It's not all don't have any words in them, but they still tell the story. I'm touching this to the water because um, to lay on top of these other filaments because it's easier when you're pulling paper when you go to lay it down it sticks better to it wet sticks to wet um, so that makes it a little easier I've got a whole bag here um, of different I wanna, I'm gonna add some yellow to this and see. And see what it spills out of me, and see what it ends up looking like. Oh, yeah. I'll pull a couple small pieces of this. I think this will be kind of good for the cyanotype. I love the different textures and everything. I'll probably get the video in a second to show you how to start. So here are some of the final pulled pieces after I added that yellow to that tail. I can even lift up some of this and show you um, some of the earlier ones. It's beautiful. That has some inclusions in it. And there's that one. And I love the texture of this. So it is messy, which I love. I love getting my hands dirty, as you can see there.
So that is my demonstration for you. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have learned. Um, I hope you, you, I have sparked some curiosity in you. And this is something very simple for people to do at home. There's not much that you need. You know, I explained to you in the beginning that I even used just some repurposed construction paper. And that's what I do with my students in school is just use simple construction paper. I have them blend it into a liquid and then we pull it into an organic piece of paper. And I have them make inclusions uh, or include inclusions in theirs. And I try to encourage them to think about why they're putting certain inclusions in there to make them think conceptual. Uh, it is a fun process. It's simple. Everybody can love it, um, whether you're two or a hundred and two. It's, it's just a very fun thing to do and, and learn about and have fun with. So, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my work with you. I hope you have a wonderful day.